It's going to be an international interview. It's going to be in English, and you will learn everything about Vulcanese and world records. Big applause for David Brechel from Peak Evolution. High five, my friend. <laughs> Enjoy it. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm ha actually happy that I can be here and I, I will just tell you a story about an adventure. I will, uh, I will try not uh, bore you with any numbers and uh, yeah, economic figures. This is literally just a story about an adventure we had last year. Usually we would be here uh, as a team of three because since um, we were little children, I did all projects in my life with my two best friends, David and Patrick. We started out when we were little building tree houses, building dams in the rivers out in the forest. And uh, then we moved on to little motorbikes, pit bike. Later on, when we were around 16, we built an off-road buggy from an old motorbike and parts we found uh, in the scrap heap. And it was just a logical consequence that when we were grown up and we were, wanted to start a company, we did it together. And we did it in the field of mobility. Mm. So we were really interested in electric mobility and we were thinking, well, in what sector does actually electric mobility make the most sense? Because when you think about it, an electric passenger vehicle, it sits around about 22 hours a day and when it drives, it has to go long distances at high speed where it loses a lot of energy with wind resistance. You don't know where the next charger is and so on. So it's actually not so super efficient. Whereas commercial vehicles, for example, in a municipality or in a farm or in a mine or in a ski resort, you know exactly where they go. They never go far away. They maybe go 10, 20 kilometers away, they come back, they go out again. They also drive a lot of uphill and downhill. So the regenerative braking makes a lot of sense there. So actually, in um, commercial vehicles, electric mobility makes a lot of sense and it can save a lot of money compared to a diesel vehicle. That's why we decided to electrify um, a multi-purpose off-road transport vehicle. This is what our company does and the vehicle is actually standing over there about 50 meters and it would be cool if you come around and look at it. So now we are a young company with no track record, we have no investors, we have no money, but we have a great idea. So how do we get the money? How do we get the customers? We thought um, we, we need some special project, something that makes heads turn. Uh, we want to set a world record. And privately, we are enthusiastic mountaineers and uh, mountain bikers. That's what it looks like when we go on tours. We sometimes also like to take our mountain bikes up to glaciers and ride down over the ice. So we're really passionate about this. And we were looking, where can we go? to the highest point with our mountain bikes. We, we just want to go to the highest point in the world with our mountain bike. And when we were Googling this and found this volcano in Chile that was nearly 7,000 meters high, uh, it made click in our head and we thought, okay, we've built this extremely, uh, or we want to build this extremely off-road capable vehicle. We're going to show what it can do by setting a world record uh, and driving it up to this volcano. So actually, um, once we started this project and we, uh, we were looking for sponsors and told them, we want to look, we want to set this world record. We're going to build this vehicle. The whole project started going and we managed to find sponsors and uh, our first uh, money. So um, here on the left side, you can see the chassis of the vehicle getting ready. Uh, in the middle are the battery pack. Uh, in the front are the motors, the inverters. And uh, this is really just the beginning of the, of, of the build. On the right side, you can see the um, uh, expedition box. That's where we were going to live inside. Um, that's where also are the, the spare parts, the food, everything we need for this expedition. And most important, the volcano that we wanted to go to is in the middle of the desert. It's about four, uh, 400 kilometers away from the closest electricity plug. So how are we gonna charge the vehicle? And you'll see in a bit how it works. And this box had an, uh, an important uh, role in this. This was two years ago. We finally were able to reveal the vehicle uh, to the public. 
It was a great moment for us because we had to fight four years and put in a lot of work. We had to get through the whole COVID um, pandemic that slowed down. Like a lot of uh, sponsors withdrew. They uh, put everything on ice, um, but we still managed to finish the truck. And we thought uh, one month later, we were going to, to Chile to set the world record. But we did our plans without the bureaucracy of the Swiss um, uh, traffic department because we didn't have, we didn't get the, the, the street permission for the truck. Um, it took another year, a whole year to go through the whole paperwork to finally get the number plates on the truck and be allowed to drive on the road. So right now this truck is fully street legal. And for us, this is, was one of the biggest achievements because to build, to, to build a truck yourself and get it legal on the road, it is uh, just, um, yeah, it breaks your brain, really. So finally, um, that was last October. So almost a year ago, uh, we loaded everything into the container and you can already see the, this expedition on the box, uh, back, box on the back can just be removed from the vehicle. It's a really easy system that works with hydraulic clamps and it was put in the container on its own. Now you can also see the secret of uh, where do we get the energy from in the middle of the desert. We built a solar charging system. You can see the, our solar pan, um, power plant fully deployed. It consisted of 28 solar panels with a total power of 10 kilowatt peak and all the electronics necessary for, the, for this power plant was also inside the box. This tip, this picture was taken at the Pacific coast in Chile because our trip to the world record was starting at sea level. So actually we wanted to touch the sea and then get in the vehicle and drive to the highest point ever reached. Also to get out, six we I, actually we had to go to the to the desert for six weeks. I didn't mention it before, uh, not only 400 kilometers away but this whole trip was also going to take six weeks without any contact to civilization. And we were six people on the team, so we had to take all the food necessary with us. This is actually only one third of the total supplies. So we, we filled this, uh, the pickup trunk three times. We had uh, 10 liters of olive oil, uh, 30 kilograms of oatmeal, uh, about 8 kilograms of tuna cans, uh, 300 eggs, like a lot of, of food because we had to make sure that we wouldn't starve. Also, we brought 600 liters of water. So, and why does it take six weeks in the desert? Why can't we just drive there in two days up and two days down? Any one of you who has ever climbed a really high mountain, uh, 3000 meters and more, knows that uh, with the altitude, your body starts struggling. You get the air gets thinner, uh, you get uh, tired quicker. And if you go to a high altitude of 4,000 meters or more without preparation, you will most likely get an extreme headache. You can go unconscious and you can even die. So to reach an altitude of nearly 7,000 meters, the body needs around one month to adapt to the high altitude. So the red blood cells change they become more efficient at taking oxygen out of the air and um, providing your body with the necessary oxygen. So this stop was at the Salt Lake at an altitude of around 3,700 meters uh, where we started our acclimatization. A few days later, we actually were able to, for the first time, see the summit of Ojos del Salado. You can see it here in the background. That's the volcano that we uh, wanted to drive up to. It's the highest volcano in the world with an altitude of 6,893 meters. But we we were still not ready for the altitude because our bodies weren't prepared. We, we, it took us a few more days. Uh, we set up another camp at this uh, salt lagoon. The temperature there is during day around 5 to 10 degrees and at night uh, around minus, minus 5 to minus 10 degrees. So this water was actually around 0 degrees or even below but it is so salty that it will never freeze um, above anywhere minus 10 degrees. So it's actually like an antifreeze. It looks warm, but it is really, really cold. Uh, we kept driving uh, towards the volcano and we made a very special encounter because we came across a camp um, and it was actually Porsche there with a team of 20 people and two extremely modified 911s with combustion engines. And uh, randomly they were there at the same time 
and they tried the exact same thing as us to set uh, an altitude world record. So they came there with a full uh, big truck with the 911s inside. They had a big tent, four pickup truck, and a team of around 20 people. But um, you can imagine the difference in budget between Porsche and us as a startup with six people. But we didn't get impressed too much. We were still sure that uh, we would get higher up than them. Uh, this is another camp at an altitude um, of around 5,800 meters. So we are higher than the summit of uh, Kilimanjaro at this, uh, at this point. And for us, it was uh, pretty incredible to be at this altitude with basically a fully equipped camper van. And um, this is what it looks inside the cabin on on the back so we are here literally at one of the most extreme places in the world 300 kilometers away from civilization outside here the temperatures went to down to minus 15 degrees and uh, i was in there making pizza because we had literally unlimited amounts of energy our solar power plant was producing more power than we needed because the batteries were full before our bodies were ready to continue higher up. So we had an espresso machine, a toaster, uh, a water boiler and an induction stove there. And we don't know for sure, but uh, we just claim that this is the world record for the highest pizza that was ever made. The next day, Porsche caught up with us. Here you can see again, the difference in philosophy between the two teams. On the left side, you can see our truck. It is fully street legal. It is actually a fully functional a commercial vehicle, it has hydraulics, it has mechanical power takeoff. We actually went to work with it in the municipality to, um, to just uh, show them and to do some trials. It also was a habitat for six people, providing us with a place to stay, with food and everything. And on the right side, you can see the Porsche combustion engine, not street legal extremely modified. It serves no purpose except for this single record. So it's basically standing in a, in a museum now. And also the, the people, um, only one person could drive and the other people actually had to be driven up as far as possible with a, a, a pickup truck. And from there they had to, they had to walk up. So the, the support team of Porsche, they had to walk up even the night before to meet the car and help the car drive up as high as possible. And they had no shelter. They had to leave as soon as possible because um, at some point the cold temperature and the thin air will just exhaust you. Uh, <laughs> you can also see they kept continuing and in the end they managed with the help of um, winches and, um, and the team that went before them to make some anchors for the winch to get almost to the, to the side summit of Ojos del Salado. So we were still waiting and looking at our last camp. So this is at 6,300 meters. There to the right you can see the summit where um, Porsche went up and we were getting ready for the next day to do the same thing. To even go there to this point, we had to cross a glacier. And um, this was the most scary moment of the, of the trip because it was actually extremely slippery. And down here on the right side, you have a uh, ice spike um, that have been melted out by the sun. And if we drive in there, the, the car, the, the truck would just crash in and get stuck and we would never get it out. On the left side, there is a big slope of ice. And if we slide there down there, we would end up 300 meters lower on the glacier and um, we would probably be dead. And the Porsche before us uh, went across and it already started sliding towards the downhill, um, but they had attached with a winch to the other side of the glacier so they managed to pull it back over. We did it without the winch uh, and luckily we didn't slide down, we managed to make it over. So we kept driving in the end until all four wheels were just spinning. So we had the differential lock engage, um, obviously the four-wheel drive and all four wheels were just spinning and we reached an altitude of 6,510 meters which is a new altitude world record for electric vehicle. <clears throat> for us, it was a, a great success because we actually managed to pass the old record. 
by over a thousand vertical meters. So we made it a full kilometer higher than any other electric vehicle before us. After this adventure to uh, recover from the exhaustion, we uh, went back down and took some days relaxing in the hot springs. So before I come to the conclusion, to the end of my uh, presentation, I want to show you the trailer. Uh, for the film that will be made about our project because uh, we were six people three of them were camera crew and they filmed every detail and There will be a film that's coming out next year And um, I want to show you the trailer just to get you interested and I really hope once the film is out you will um, Watch it Our dream is to take electric mobility beyond its limits we're going to build a new electric truck and take it up to almost 7,000 meters to the summit of the highest volcano in the world to set the new altitude for a record. As a filmmaker, I'm attracted by adventurous and life-changing stories. And I'm always looking for visionary characters with mind-blowing ideas. To make it up that mountain, we have to be extremely fit. Our mountaineering skills will help us reach that goal. <laughs> We spent two years designing everything. I was just fitting everything together and it has to work. This is the beat, we do not know what it is, we just ignore it. We will also be completely energy independent because we charge our vehicle with solar power. So that's all perfect, but um, <laughs> Probably still better than on Tesla car. <laughs> Maybe you want to do some test drive by pulling the truck up there to where the tree is. It's going to be far up 6,000 meters. Many have tried with combustion engines, with all kinds of different vehicles. That means, like, okay, big global players are interested in this record. So hopefully, we do not run into any problems because then it will get really uncomfy. There is kaput! There is kaput! And they just believe in themselves. They, they just believe they can do it and they're better than anybody else. With this expedition, we can make a statement that it works under the toughest conditions. This is his story, what they managed to do here. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Um, at the end, I just want to um, point out again that uh, the project was called Peak Evolution. If you're interested in it, you'll find everything on the website, peakevolution.ch. Uh, more infos about uh, the project. And our company is Terran Electric Drive System. We uh, developed this uh, fully electric off-road transport vehicle. It's standing over there. 50 meters from here, the vehicle that has been on the volcano, so come and have a look. And we also offer um, engineering solutions, uh, prototyping related to electric mobility. And if you're in need of any service, please contact us. Thank you very much.